Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today we will discuss about the solar thermal power. So, solar energy can be used as a solar thermal power and in the form of direct energy conversions, conversion also with the help of solar PVs. So, this is not a uh, 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 direct energy conversion type of system, solar thermal is not a direct, direct energy conversion type of system. And uh, topics to be covered here uh, in today's lectures are collectors in various temperature ranges and application, flat plate collectors, transmissivity of the cover system, concentrating collectors, low temperature plants that is power plants, medium temperature power plants and high temperature power plants and they are all solar thermal power plants. So, it is a sort of non-conventional type of energy system. But it is becoming per very popular day by day due to various reasons. If you look at the solar energy, earth receives around 10 to power 14 kilowatts of energy from sun. And when it reaches the earth surface, it is around 1000 watts or 1 kilowatt. 1 kilowatt of energy means, so earth receives around 1000 watts per meter square of ener energy from the sun. In that case, when the sky is clear, when there are diffuse refractory radiations also directly we get around uh, 500 to 600 watts per meter square, it can go up to 700, 700 is also very rare. Uh, normally it is between 500 to 600 watts per meter square and sun is not a <coughs> constant supply of energy, sun does not provide constant supply of energy. In the night, we get no energy from the sun. Second, three in the day, second thing in the daytime, there is a variation in the supply of energy, right. And on different dates, we get different type of uh, solar radiations, right. So, this has to be, I mean, uh, taken care with the help of the electronics, so that there is at the output, we get solar con uh, constant supply of the solar energy. Further storage is required when there is a variation in thermal energy for electrical solar PV okay we can do some electronics, but for a solar thermal energy some storage is required. So, that the energy can be stored in thermal storage and when the sun is not there or there is a less amount of solar energy available the energy from the storage can be used right. So, solar thermal energy First of all, it requires large area because the intensity of the energy is not very high, right. So, it requires the large area instrumentation because solar, sometimes solar tracking system is also required to tap the solar energy. But the benefit of the solar energy is it does not contaminate the environment. Classification of temperature ranges. classification of different temperature ranges. If we are able to store the th th solar thermal energy up to let us say 100 degree centigrade, what is the use? When we are storing th solar thermal energy up to 100 degree centigrade, it can be used for the heating, drying, uh, this is space heating, right. And, and so many other uses, right. For example, uh, for taking bath, we need temp water approximately at the temperature of 60 degree centigrade. So, this type of system fits for that. Another is the temperature range between 100 to 200 degree centigrade. Between 100 to 200 degree centigrade, if solar thermal energy is available, in that case, it can be used for the refrigeration. Refrigeration. It can be used for the power generation, right. It can be used for the cooking also. So, there can be many application for this. And when the solar thermal is available greater than 200 degree centigrade, then we can start, we can run the Stirling engine. If you remember the Stirling cycle, if you depict the Stirling cycle on PV diagram, it has caused two constant volume processes and two 
constant temperature adiabatic processes. So, constant sorry constant temperature processes. So, 1 to 2 is constant volume process, 2 to 3 is temperature is equal to constant, this is volume is equal to constant and 4 to 1 again temperature is equal to constant. And the Stirling cycle can be coupled with the solar concentrator. So, that is another way of uh, generating power. Otherwise, we can run a solar power plant using 200 degree centigrade temperature and this can be generated by paraboloid mirror if we use, para, I will discuss it later on, paraboloid type of mirrors, this much of temperature can be attained. Now, there are two types of collectors. Collectors means solar collectors, one is flat plate, there is a flat plate as so solar radiations are falling on the plate, the temperature of the plate is increased. Subsequently, there is a working fluid, it may be air or water, normally it is water and subsequently heat is transmitted to the water and the, the heat is used for different per, uh, applications. They are concentrating characters also which concentrate the solar radiations and there we can attain high temperature. But these type of concentrators, <laughs> uh, first of all high cost, cost is high if you compare with the flat plate collector. These type of concentrators have high cost, normally made of aluminum, stainless steel, aluminum alloy or stainless steel and it is anodized aluminum, anodized aluminum. For this concentrating collector strong direct normal <laughs> radiation is required. If the direct radiation is there only then it will work, it will not work for the diffuse radiations. So, that is the limit of the uh, concentration type. Suppose there is the weather is partly clouded, in partly clouded weather it will not be very effective. And for this type of uh, concentrator normally tracking system is also required, so that it moves with the movement of the sun, it follows the, it tracks the movement, uh, movement of the sun, so that the maximum energy from the sun is trapped, right. Further they require a strong foundation because the vibrations may also be there due to wind. So, a strong foundation is also required, but they have more absorber area. Is more in case of concentrated type of system. So, insulation, insulation means solar intensity of solar radiation, insulation is more, insulation is more in case of <laughs> concentrated type of uh, solar character. Now, we will further discuss the flat plate character, the working of flat plate character. So, flat plate character has a box, there is a box, it is very simple in construction. It can be a wooden box or a metallic box or nowadays PVC box are also available. Now, this box has an absorber plate, this is a box and this box has, has absorber plate. this is absorber plate, where absorption of solar radiation takes place and it has cover plate that is it. This is the simplest form of uh, 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 flat plate solar collector. We can fill this packed, it, we can pack this bed with some material, absorbing material that is known as packed bed collector. It can have Suppose the air, suppose we are using working fluid is air, air is coming from here, leaving from here, then it is single pass, then air is entering from here and then taking U turn and coming from here, then it is double pass. And so, working is clear by nomenclature itself. In some of the collectors, there are tubes, and in tubes, the working fluid flows, right, and the heat which is coming to the absorber is subsequently taken away by the cooling water the temperature of the cooling water rises and this water can be used for different applications. Now, they are evacuated type of collector also, evacuated tube collector. In this on the bed, instead of having absorber, they are tubes, evacuated tubes, individually evacuated tubes. They are glass tubes and in the glass tube concentrically fixed, there is a water tube and there is an array of evacuated tubes on the bed. So, water is flowing from this side and leaving from the another side, there is a header 
and subsequently in a tank the water is collected. So, these evaporator type tubes type of solar collector has I, I, they are more effective than the flat plate type of collectors. And so, in this type of flat plate type of collectors, collectors the insulation is important if, if insulation proper insulation is not done their uh, efficiency may go down drastically. Now, the where from the energy is coming in the collectors? It is coming from the plate transmission plate cover plate right and it is coming in two forms. First of all transmission energy to the absorber by transmission and absorption the two ways. Now, total uh, energy transmitted is total energy by uh, transmission total and total energy by absorption that is total energy coming to the plate. Now, if you remember the Snell's law there is a plate there coplanar incident rays reflected then this angle of incident is equal to angle of reflection. But 100 percent reflection will not take place the intensity of the uh, uh, radiation which is falling on this plate part of this intensity will be reflected it will enter the glass and part of the energy will be reflected right. <laughs> so, this is the reflected beam this is intensity of a reflected beam and part of the energy will be entering the plate right. If you measure the reflectivity of the medium 1 and medium 2 this is reflectivity of the medium 1 and that is rho because suppose it is a uh, light having uh, polarization components then first component is equal to sin square theta 2 minus theta 1 divided by si sorry sin square theta 2 plus theta 1 that is one component and that is seven component of transmittivity transmissivity sorry this reflectivity this is reflectivity 10 square theta 2 minus theta 1 divided by 10 square theta 2 plus theta 1 this is theta 1 and the average reflectivity will is going to be half because there are two component of the polarization of the light right. So, both comp component we have taken the transmissivity transmissivity 1 transmissivity 2 and suppose there is a normal radiation. So, there is a normal incident when there is a normal incident in that case rho is equal to rho 1 plus rho 2 and it is going to be n 1 minus n 2 divided by n 1 plus n 2 whole square. Now, transmissivity is it also average of both the components. Now, suppose on a plate let us assume there is a plate there is a cover plate there is an incident of light I reflected rho 1. So, the light which is entering the, the cover plate plate is entering the cover plate is 1 minus rho 1 right. <coughs> now, this 1 minus rho 1 light intensity of the light will again reflected from the bottom of the plate. So, it is going to be the rho 1 1 minus rho 1 right and light which is coming out is 1 minus rho 1 whole square. Then light is again getting upper upper side of the plate and then part of the light will be passing through the plate and that is going to be the rho 1 1 minus rho 1 whole square and then part of the light will be coming back uh, uh, part of the light will be coming back and this is going to be equal to again because it is reflected rho 1 square because this is rho 1 rho 1 multiplied by the rho 1 square 1 minus rho 1. Now, part of this light will again 
reflected and part will be refracted. The part of the light which is reflected, refracted is going to be the rho 1 square, 1 minus rho 1 square and part of the light which is reflected from the Boltram side is again uh, this is this is rho 1. So, part of the light which is ok. So, part of the light which is transmitted to the glass is rho 1 minus 1 minus rho 1 square. So, I am repeating intensity of the 1 suppose light is entering the glass upper edge of the glass upper upper side of the glass part of the radiations will be reflected that is rho 1 part of the irradiations will be transmitted it is 1 minus rho 1. Now, at the bottom side again some reflection will be there that is again this radiation multiplied by the rho 1 and remaining part is going to be 1 minus rho 1 square. This rho 1 1 minus rho 1 again it will be reflected. So, it is going to be the rho 1 square multiplied by 1 minus rho 1. Remaining radiations will pass will come back to the atmosphere it is going to be the rho 1 1 minus rho 1 square because this is 1 minus rho 1 this is 1 minus rho 1 square. Now, again this will strike the plate and transmitted radiation are going to be rho 1 square 1 minus rho 1 square. The series will continue. So, if we see the trans total transmission through this plate of radiation of this plate is going to be equal to the radiation suppose is falling 1 then it is going to be 1 minus rho 1 square plus rho 1 square 1 minus rho 1 square plus rho 1 raised to power 4 1 minus rho 1 square and so on up to infinity. So, S is equal to 1 minus rho 1 square or is equal to tau r 1 1 plus rho square plus rho, rho 1 square rho 1 raised to power floor plus and so on. Now, this is infinity series. So, suppose we have an infinity series for example, S is equal to 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube and so on. So, simply what we do we multiply x with S and when we and then we get x x plus x square plus x cube plus x raised to power n infinity then we take the difference s 1 minus x is equal to 1. So, s is equal to 1 by x 1 minus x. Here uh, the x has to be less than 1. So, rho is less than 1 here. So, s here now this s is different from this s 1 minus rho 1 square 1 by 1 minus rho sorry 1 minus rho square the geometric ratio is rho square or is equal to 1 minus rho 1 whole square divided by 1 minus rho square and this is going to be equal to 1 minus rho this will be cancelled out. So, finally, we are going to get is equal to 1 minus rho l 1 plus rho l. So, this is the energy which is coming to the absorber. Same is the case for 2. Right. Now, if it is a multi layer, if it is a multi layer, there are number of glasses, multi layer of glasses, then in that case it is going to be the rho 1 or we can simply take rho. 1 minus rho divided by 1 plus 2 m minus 1 multiplied by rho. So, m is the number of layer. Suppose, number of layer is 1, then we are going to get this formula. Suppose, number of layer is 2, then we are getting 1 plus 3 rho and so on. Right? <laughs> now, there is another uh, calculation of the transmission, the transmission base of absorption. transmission based on absorption. Now, there is a glass radiations are coming falling on the glass and the in the course of travelling through the glass they are getting absorbed. 
suppose here the intensity is i this is a suppose d x here the intensity is going to be i plus d i right. So, from Boger's equation Boger's law d i is equal to minus k i d x it is a first order equation and k is the coefficient of extinction it has to be as small as possible and it is independent of the wavelength. So, value of k varies between 2 to 25 right. So, the minimum value of k is always good and from here we get transmissivity i normal radiation this is i l is equal to e to power minus k delta c is the thickness x this is delta c this is for the normal radiation suppose there are diffuse radiations also in case of diffuse radiations because radiations are coming from different directions. So, normally we assume they are coming at angle theta theta is equal to 60 degree normally. Now, here in this case because we have to take it in the generalized form suppose angle after refraction is this is theta 1 suppose this is theta and it has to travel a distance l suppose here this is thickness delta c. So, this equation will be modified as is equal to e raised to power minus k delta c by cos theta or this is if it is if you take this theta 2 then this cos theta 2 because this is the distance which is which is travel through the glass right. <laughs> so, transmissivity we have two for the absorption transmissivity calculations and absorbity calculation. Right. If you take both into the account suppose now we take the glass amount of radiation is transmitted after transmission uh, it is absorbed right this is reflected right and it is going up and then again when it is going down it is this is due to reflection. So, it will keep on going and we will get the series like And again we will follow the same process to net fraction absorbed is net fraction absorbed is tau alpha 1 plus 1 minus alpha rho d plus 1 minus alpha cube rho d square and so on. Again it is going to be an infinite series we will get tau alpha 1 minus 1 minus alpha rho d right. When there are diffused uh, reflection then in this case rho d is equal to tau a 1 minus. Now, we will go for different type of concentrating collectors collectors. Now, one is flat plate type of collector flat plate type of collector can also be a concentrating type of collector if we take combination of flat plate collectors they are CPC compound parabolic character they have a typical shape and where the when the sun rays fall they get concentrated. So, this is known as compound parabolic characters Fresnel's Fresnel lens characters Fresnel lens characters they are flesh fringes and this is how the the basic purpose is concentration of the solar energy. Cylindrical parabolic collector this is they are very famous. So, the if you look it, it is a uh, is a cylindrical parabolic type of shape and in the center of this collector cylindrical parabolic collector 
there is always a tube and the working fluid normally water it flows in the tube and it is a parabolic collector a cylindrical in, if it is a three dimensional geometry. So, it is a cylindrical in nature. So, while passing through this tube the, uh, uh, the solar power is concentrated on this tube and fluid get heated and we can get up to temperature of 200 degree centigrade uh, using this uh, uh, cylindrical parabolic collector. There are fixed circular collectors also. Fixed circular collector there is a moving receiver, receiver also moves the uh, solar radiation they fall on a uh, on the surface they are reflected and the, the, the radiations are collected at receiver and the receiver keeps on moving uh, in a circular uh, on a circular path. So, they are these are known as fixed circular concentrating and moving <coughs> receiver uh, collectors. There are parabolite dishes also, parabolite dishes which are used for uh, concentrating the solar power. So, we can have different number of geometries for having uh, concentrated solar power. Now, for the low power generation there is a system which is known as solar pond, which is normally used for solar thermal energy storage. So, from the solar pond there is normally brine, it is the, the salt is mixed in the solar pond. So, there is a brine and the brine can go to the heat exchanger, because power generation method is same the Rankine cycle. The, the thing is how we get a steam out of the feed water. So, the, the power generation process is same, same old Rankine cycle. But the issue remains how we generate the heat and how we create the pressure. So, the, the, the hot fluid or the hot water saline water it enters the heat exchanger, it has a pump and the pump pumps the water in heat exchanger, the pressure is increased. The water from the from to the pump comes from a condenser right and condenser has a cooling tower because condenser also needs water to take away heat. So, there is a cooling tower. So, there is a normal uh, thermal power uh, type of system and the before entering the condenser the steam goes to the turbine. So, there is a turbine. So, after the pump the heat is attained from this heat exchanger. So, heat exchanger works as a boiler right and the heat the steam low temperature steam it goes to uh, the uh, uh, turbine expansion takes place the low temperature vapor goes to the turbine and expansion takes place. After the expansion it goes to the condenser and after the condenser it goes to the pump. So, the heat source is solar pond here. So, similar type of next system is when we have an array of flat plate characters. So, solar pond is reflect, replaced by flat plate characters number of flat plate characters right and then again there is a heat exchanger rest of the system is same. Here normally butane is used as the working fluid and again when the when the high pressure liquid it takes heat from the heat exchanger it goes to the turbine and expansion in the turbine and rest of the cycle is same. But the power is generated at low pressure the intensity of the power is low in order to if you compare with the conventional power system if you want to generate the same amount of power more area will be required right and uh, so the bulk of the or size of the plant will <coughs> change. Now, medium temperature power collect medium temperature solar thermal power. So, medium temperature of power it is normally generated by parabolic collector collector collectors right. And in parabolic collectors as I said earlier there are cylindrical parabolic normally cylindrical parabolic collectors are used in the center there is a tube and power is concentrated on the tube right and up to 1 megawatt of power can be generated or has been generated using uh, these type of collectors. There are certain shortcomings because on high temperature the curvature of 
this reflecting mirrors may change and that may reduce the power generation, but in general it is quite successful <laughs> when the parabolic collectors are used for power generation. Now, high temperature for high temperature we can go for solar form it is on lar large scale because the intensity of the solar radiation is not that high. So, on the large scale power generation or high temperature uh, power generation or heliostat. <laughs> so, there is a solar tower, it is known as a solar tower and it is surrounded by a number of reflectors and all reflectors are focusing on the solar tower power where the heat, where the heat is generated and which heat is subsequently used for running a power plant. Right. That is all for today. Thank you very much.